everybody, how are you doing today? I am so excited to be coming to you live to teach this fabulous painting we're going to be doing of this great coastal Italian village. Now, on the mic today is my husband, John. Hey, guys. He's going to track me with cameras, answer questions during this live event. And basically what we're going to be doing, you guys suggested this paint, this, this photograph to become a painting. We sometimes do these votes where you guys give me ideas about what you'd like to paint because... You know, this is really about you and your art journey, and it's always great to know what you guys are interested in learning. And this was one of the ones that was put up. Now, this particular image was really interesting to see y'all's reaction to it because many of you are like, oh, I'd love to do it. I want to do it, but it looks really hard. And I thought that was so fascinating because actually of the images that were suggested during our vote, this was actually one of the easier ones. Because when you deal with something that's highly realistic and complicated like this, as an artist, you basically have a couple decisions. And I like to break it down into two things, which is lean into the realism, which yeah, you're gonna beat the canvas for a while, laboring away, mm. or catch the expressionism, catch the impressionism of the painting, loosen up a bit, and catch the overall feeling. And the reason why this skill relates to you guys is this is a great thing to learn to do if you're wanting to take some of those trip photos, some of those, you know, cruise photos, and turn them into paintings. Really? Mm hmm <laughs> Yeah. This is a skill that dr directly relates to, you know, you went on that trip, you got all those great photos, you think to yourself, man, I'd really love to make that a painting. How do I do that? These are some skills that are going to directly relate to that. They're not as hard as you think they are. I would say in the beginner difficulty level, um, if you're deciding like, am I going to watch this and just learn from it? Am I going to paint along? And you know I always want you guys to paint along, even oh. if it feels overwhelming. But it's about a two hoot. Yeah. So in our scale, like one hoot is the easiest of the paintings and you don't really need to have painted it all before to do anything as one hoot. Two hoot is great. If you've done a few paintings and you understand a little blending and a little dry brushing and a little layering. Not even like a lot, just like a little bit. But a lot of you guys thought this was three hoot. Mm. Well, right? they, there's a lot of people. There's over 400 people who are already here with this. I am so excited. This is going to be like the pier. I think people are going to really surprise themselves with what they can do with this piece. You give me a little sherpa dance because we're doing our... We got, we got, yeah, give we, me music, man. I'm, I'm you awkward. Hear, you hear music up there? No. Oh, there it goes. Oh, I didn't know you couldn't hear it. That's why. I had the music going on a little bit in the background. So thank you guys for all coming and hanging out with us today. This is pretty exciting. You know, we always like to celebrate when we have 300 people here with us together. We don't know how that started. We started calling ourselves Sherpa when we got We are Sherpa. I don't we know because somehow we think we're Sparta we're, with art. <laughs> I don't know. But it is. But now we have 400 dorks. people. We just love it. So thank you guys for coming. And we like to do a little dance. But you know, if you can't dance, <laughs> just wiggle your fingers and wiggle your toes. I like to see if I can crack John up and be like. <laughs> so you should end up turning here into a little meme. He's like, I, I, you know what? I'm trying to help the members. The members. I love it when I'm a gif. I love it. No. Uh, so we, if you're gonna if you're gonna be as dorky as me, you just you just kind of embrace it at some point in your life and lean into it. Now you got you got some wishes on the canvas there. I do have some wishes on the canvas. I've been kind of watching the group. Yeah. I I stalk y'all in the Facebook group and yeah. on the website. So um, strength and wellness for Joe was wish. Joe's just looking for you know he didn't really lead us into what he's going through, but he's just really needing some strength and wellness. Mm -hmm. um, Claudia definitely needs some healing. Um, she's going through a lot, and her sister's really worried about her. Mm -hmm. And then for Pamela, who posted um, quite a fall down the stairs uh, post photograph, <laughs> <laughs> we're wishing for some quick recovery for her. Um, we're also wishing for some healing for baby Dakota. Um, and then Emily is wishing for her friend to have an easy passing and strength and support for the family. And of course, right now we're wishing for the world mm -hmm. to just art mm -hmm. instead of, you know, fight. Just the thought I'm just, having. Yeah, Let's yeah. all just paint. Just paint. I'll just paint. Just put it on your canvas. Do you remember in the 80s when they had like um, dance battles? <laughs> <laughs> Let's bring that back, but with art. <laughs> just work it out that way. Just paint it all out, guys. <laughs> so we're wishing that for the world. We'll see how it catches on. Yep. I've got my uh, you got your nine, materials over there. Yeah, I do. I got my nine by twelve canvas, and I have divided this in half very lightly with a pencil. So I have measured out halfway up here and halfway here. And if you've noticed, I've taken my reference photo, which you guys have in the group, and we'll make sure is on the TIS page. Um, I've printed it out and folded it in half. 
And this is going to help me lay in this painting mm. easily. Cool. Easily, easily, easily. And I'm going to do that so that you guys can see it very bravely. So what, what do you put uh, out there? With burnt umber. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I've just decided I'm a crazy woman. So I'm going to lay it in with some burnt umber, but I'm probably not going to use that much of it on the painting. I'm going to talk about this painting. I am using two blues. I'm using ultramarine and phthalo blue. I have some purple here, and I'm probably going to use the purple in place of black. Okay. Right? In most places, because I'm I have some black here put aside just in case I need it. I have pulled three yellows. Right. I have Indian yellow, I have cad yellow, and I have yellow ochre. <laughs> On this, if I decide to use it, you guys decided to use one with me. Uh, Australian sienna, you could use raw sienna, you could use any cad yellow deep, any yellow deep. You're falling off the, the camera there. I am falling off the camera? To the, to the, to the right, you scoot, scoot. Doop, there you go, there it goes. Doop, doop, doop. Okay, so the, I have those there. I pulled a couple reds. And basically what you want is a warm red and a cool red. I have a cad red light and a naphthol red. A burnt sienna. And of course, a thalo green. Because mm. these two make such great oceany colors. And we're going to have a couple ocean colors going here. We're going to be very colorful and very loose. But the first thing we have to do is lay this sucker in, right? So that seems hard sometimes. How do you, how do you put a painting in? How do you take this trip photo that you have and figure out, how to lay it out as landscape. And that folding into fours and making fours on your canvas is a great way to help you simplify small sections so you're not overwhelmed by the whole. I'm going to just put a little water on. I've got a little number uh, four here. You guys are welcome to sketch in with chalk. Hmm. But I was thinking today what I'd show you is really, really how like if I were just post trip and I was in my studio alone, how would I put this painting together? How would you put this? Painting How would I do that? How so when I'm you? looking at this section, this square over on the upper right, I'm going to just look at, and I'm wondering if I can, do do do, somewhere here, so you can kind of see what I, I'm doing. I, I have picture in picture for them. Oh, okay. So you so I've divided, but you can see how the divides in half that, yeah. are there. Okay. So I'm looking in my upper square quadrant, and I'm going to come midway up, because it's about midway up. And I'll just make a nice little brown line wandering down, right? And it leaves, it ends here. It leaves a whole lot of this for horizon. And it's going to come down a little bit. Interestingly enough, the horizon is just a hair below my halfway point. So I'm going to come across here and kind of rough in that line. Now. There's this little bunch of rocks that come over here, and they end just almost at the midway point, a little above the midway point in the lower left section. So then I can come in and be like, hey, there's a little rock guy. But mostly there's just a little pile of rocks, and I'm going to sketch that very loosely over there. Over here, right, about an inch down from the midpoint is sort of this little inlet where I guess they're going to land some boats and walk along and think about things, as they probably do in their beautiful, awesome home, mm. right? Because they got a really cool home. So I have all this right here, right? And anybody in this cliff village has a pretty awesome home. Anybody in this cliff village is rocking it. Yeah. This is your home and you're watching. Dude, I'm so jelly. Yeah, this is jelly, like jelly, jelly of you. You win the neighborhood yeah. like contest. Won it. <laughs> Just I'm gonna come visit your house. I'm gonna come visit your home. We're painting. Have you it. come paint there? I'll come we're, there. We're, we're painting it. We haven't even been there. <laughs> we're, that's how much we like your neighborhood. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> so I'm gonna address this upper left quadrant, right? And so basically, this hill comes back almost level, right? And then has a little hill friend that comes behind that's over a few inches and wanders up, not quite to the top of the canvas, but almost, right? So very loose, very mellow, very like not so worried about it. Down here, right, I see in this lower left quadrant that there's a little block of rocks that think about being right there. And then there's this little covey bit. And if I'm trying to figure out how to curve it, I can look at the line here and go, okay, it's got to end right about there. So I can curve and use this as my guide. 
I can use these small relationships to plot out and block in what I'm doing. And that's a lot of what it is. It's just using those small relationships as you're learning to see, you know, how that's going to go. Now, this part of the hill kind of comes up just below the midway point, and then there's this neat little road that sort of comes down. And we're not, what we're going to do, how we're going to handle all this information that we have here, is we don't include all of it, okay? We're going to include all the emotion, like why were we attracted to this photograph? Well, gosh, it's the beautiful little colorful houses that you see in the picture. Picture. Wait, how do I? Which? There. <laughs> no, I'm just trying to point at it, but somehow it can't work it out. I want to say it's there, but no, it's, it's here. I got it. Here. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! One live. Okay, so see those little blocks? We're going to do that, and we're going to do this, this texture of the cliffs, and we're going to do the color of the sky, and the block of the green of the hill, and get some highlights and get some low lights. So it's actually not such an overwhelming activity that we have to do. Now, I am going to sort of block in these shapes here, and the sky and the water, and let's start doing that. We're going to start with the sky. Same thing I'm going to talk to you guys about on the sky is it's lighter than you think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I printed out a black and white so you could understand it because sometimes when we're looking at color, it will confuse us about values. So there's hue, that's this thing is blue, ultramarine blue, phthalo blue, and then there's value, which is how light or dark something is. And then there's saturation, right? Which is how much pigment or color is in a thing. So that's something we're going to worry about. I'm just taking a deep breath there. Um, and I'm going to start valuing out the sky. Now here I'll show you what I mean. So see, here's my black and white. Look how light that is. Oh, it yeah. looks so much darker to us in color, doesn't it? Yeah. But it's not. It's not. It's not. And Great. that's why sometimes when we're trying to paint a landscape... We get super, super lost, happens to me, happens to you. And you can see that there's almost like a light halo around the hill, and then it's sort of darker in the corners in this upper region. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little of my ultramarine and my thalo blue and mix them together. Right? I thought about doing a cobalt, but I was like, no, I'm going to go with the, my, my two favorite guys here. Right? So I've mixed them together, and I'm making it quite light. See how light I'm making it? Yeah. Just pulling in the white. And I'm going to come here and be like, oh, yep, that's about the light. See how that is so much lighter of a sky than you might be thinking. I'm just going to come around this hill. And I'm going to, as I come down to the water, I'm going to pull even more white on the edge of my brush here. See, I just pulled just white. And I'm going to just right along this water edge. There's a little pigment in my brush but I'm going to make sure it's that light. And here we are, blending. Blending in acrylic paint, getting a soft edge versus a hard edge. Hard edge is the paint is dry, soft edge is the paint is wet, is about um, being able to work wet into wet. And that's where sometimes people find acrylic paint frustrating as a medium, is it's drying on them before they have a chance to do the wet into wet work. That's too dark. So what I do is I offload my paint, and I just lighten that a bit with some white. Blending it in. Blending it in. Keeping it light. We want this to be light. Lighter than we think. Lighter than we think. Yeah. And I'm just going to work this sky. Just working it. Trying to keep going wet into wet. I don't want to lose this light space down here. It's important. Now, I can, if my stuff is drying out on me or giving me grief, I can put out some glazing medium. If this is not completely plugged because I have not been closing it up as I should. And what this does, this particular product is a glaze and a retarder. And it's, well, it's really an extender because a retarder is just about slowing down the drying time of the paint, but it has a very specific formulation that you can add only so much retarder to paint before your paint just never dries. Hmm. This is a glaze, right, and an extender, and it slows the drying time down of your paint. 
and there's you can mix the smallest amount of pigment to it and it's still going to dry so it's it doesn't have that fail gotcha scary scary fail space <laughs> that some of the stuff can have and this is just great if you are still kind of learning to work out your spaces and you don't want to have the sort of drawing countdown timer that acrylic paint can can drop on you. So I'm just trying to make sure this is a nice smooth sky. It's not streaky. And that is because, guys, I'm using a really good paint. I've just come back with some white here and I'm just making sure that that stays. I don't want to lose that, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to take the time to get this effect because that was a very important element in my photograph. I could put clouds here, though. Yeah. You know, it. I don't have to be a slave to what I'm seeing in the image. I'm just choosing to be because I really liked the image as it was. Now I'm kind of darkening up, as you can see, and cooling. So I'm coming up and it's a subtle, it's a subtle variance and I'll probably come back with a little glaze later to even darken this region a bit. Yeah. Because I like to. That's what I like to do. I don't know what you like to do, but that's what I like to do. Just mixing these two blues together mm -hmm. to get this nice Italian sky color. It's really interesting if you do get to go to Europe or you live in Europe, you may not know this. You have different greens and different sky colors. The light is different. It just is, guys, and that's awesome. I'm just making sure my sky is just... Now you can see that it's very light here. It's really blown out on the main camera, John. Do you need um, to adjust that? This one? Uh, both of them. No, no, I think it's just your, your screen. Okay. It's because it's I can still read the, 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 okay. the, the text. So the the uh, and uh, and over here it's uh, you can okay. See the I'm just making sure. Yeah, yeah, you're okay. I'm gonna put out some phthalo green. Ooh -hoo -hoo. Now I'm getting into my ocean colors, and I may add. Remember, I talked about using the docks purple. Mm -hmm. Is is like my chromatic black, and I have some black here just in case I want to. But even on the windows of the buildings, they're not black black. Yeah. So I'm probably going to avoid it overall. But I may not be able to. So I'm going to pull out a little purple, right? This little green, and a little phthalo blue. And I'm looking, that is going to be the dark color, right, in my ocean. So I'm going to, we're, I'm going to see if we're, they're saying that there may be some difference here. Let me take a look at the, the, the two cameras here. Okay. So I can, I can take a blue. sippy sippy while well, you're making I, sure. So w I just need to see what it is, is that we, the, uh, the, the, bl the, Trying to adjust for. Hold on, let me just take a look at something. Because as we get the, let's see if I can. Yeah. Because as we paint, it's the the. I know it always changes. Yeah. So here, this one's a little. So hot. Well, it's. So when we're saying that, when we're saying it's hot, what we're saying is the camera is. Um, I don't know the exact technical reason why the camera is doing this, but it's. Warming the color up and brightening and lightening the color up. Blow, or you could refer to it as blowing it out, which looks really good on me and not great on the painting. <laughs> I like to be blown out. It takes 10 years off. Strove it out, man. <laughs> Strove it out. So basically, I've got some phthalo green and some phthalo blue here. And I add a smidge, right, of the purple to get this deep, deep color. And I'm going to take this darker color back here, going right over my brown line. But what I'm going to do, one of the things that when you guys are working from trip photos, if I can make this suggestion, sometimes when you take a photograph, you're not trying to level the horizon line because you're just on the trip, right? You're just having fun. You just got snap. I love this scene. And your horizon line can end up being off level. And then you go to paint your painting and you paint what you see. Remember to always level the horizon line. If, even if you have to go in and edit your photo and crop a bit. But mm -hmm. this is what has to be level. Because water, never at an angle on, on the horizon. It's just not. 
things have gone wrong, like Doctor Who wrong if your water is on an angle. Now I might come in here and just lighten this a smidge for around here, but not a lot. Now I'm going to come through. I'm working a pretty big brush, you might notice. Working a pretty big brush. And that's okay. I can do that. And one thing I want to definitely do is be looking at my black and white photo so I know where I'm going to have to come back and lighten my water. So again, there's the hue, the color, and then the value. And that can be really hard to see in your um, color photo. It's always nice to pop a black and white of whatever you're painting mm -hmm. just to check those. So I've added some white. to this, just a hair, and it looks like I might even need to add a little more like blue and green to this mix and some more white. There we go. I'm just going to make sure Whoa. that this is, is it showing as light? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. I was just having a wow moment because we had over 500 people here with us now. I just looked over and was like, holy cow! Well, I'm hoping they're getting ready to just like, they're like, they're I'm going to do my trip photos. I got it. I hope that's how they're feeling. Like, okay, I got this. I got to do my trip photos like this. So I'm going to do my deep color back here, right? Mm -hmm. And then I will be pulling lighter and lighter colors as I'm going forward. So it's real simple. It's, you can even do the ultramarine and phthalo blue, a little phthalo green, right? And then just a smidge of the purple for the really dark far out which is going to be here. I'm going to just make sure that this is deep and dark. I may need to flip my canvas over to have easy access to what I'm painting. I'm just right now blocking this in. I'm putting in these sort of deep values, phthalo blue, and ultramarine blue, phthalo green, right? Look at this, just nice and dark, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And that's what we want. And darken it up with purple even more, but I think we're good for this section right now. Ultramarine, phthalo blue, phthalo green. We want to keep it fairly rich. And we may come back with an even darker value. There's some dark value right along the cliff line here. We'll come back and, and deepen that even, but we just want to start blocking in what we're seeing. And this is what that's about. Now, and then I'm going to Rinse my brush out and come back with some ladder value. Now, for my purposes, I'm going to flip this canvas again so I can see my water. And I may take my brush across this. I'm leveling my stroke. Even though I'm pulling the color across, what I'm really trying to do is level my stroke because that's going to be a big deal with my water. Now let's get a little white into our water mixture here and go ahead and make sure that here along this is lighter. Just making sure initially that these things we will come in and address directionality in water. I'm blocking in right now and just trying to make sure that I have this sort of mapped with tone. That's what I would do. Mapping with some tone. Mm -hmm. There needs to be a little toning here. Not a lot, but a little bit. So here at the bottom. And then coming through here. And we'll come back with some water and some churning, but we just want to make sure that as we're going. Now, 
for some of the folks that are just joining us here, could you review the colors that you're using? Um, so one of the things that we're going to do is we'll definitely, definitely, right now what we have out yeah. is ultramarine blue, phthalo blue, phthalo green, docks, purple, glazing medium, titanium white, and the burnt umber you see out so far is just to block in our background. Gotcha. But we want to just make sure our water is awesome sauce. That's an important thing, man. Okay. So I'm going to put out a little more phthalo blue, and I'm going to keep working at this because I'm a determined person, as you should be. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to change brushes a little bit. I'm going to get a small, that seems really small, I think maybe a four. I'm going to pull out a four bright and a two bright and work the next section through that. I feel like that's what I'm going to want to do. Ultramarine blue, phthalo blue, phthalo green, and in this case, a little diox purple. And I'm going to just very expressively start putting in this dark value that I've got at this outer edge here. I am dabbing my stroke, and you'll notice that I'm getting further back up my um, brush. I am forcing my hand to loosen and lighten up. Is that why, uh, is that why you see artists sort Sometimes, of yeah. Lean They're just trying. The reason you have a long-handled brush, mm -hmm. I'm going to get another piece of tape. I keep putting this little piece of paper down so I can <laughs> see it. I see. <laughs> You are so seeing what it's actually like in my studio, like where I'll be working and I'm like, I'll fit, I will do ridiculous things like fiddle with a piece of paper when I should just change things. Now I'm noticing directionality of this water, right? So in the corner now, it's coming up this direction. So I'm going to oh, definitely yeah. want to show some of that because we're talking about how the water comes into this cove, to this area, because this is why they settled here, right? There's a safe area. Mm -hmm. You could you could dock, you could land, you could be here, and you have to think there's probably been people living on this little on this little part of the world a really long time. Probably yes. Yeah. Since and since so just since people were out there, they were probably going. This is a good fishing spot. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> super ideal. I'm just just making sure my values are pulled through. So it's not just the color I'm looking for, it's the darkness of the color, right? And I'm just trying to, I see, you know, this kind of like, being very loose, there's this dark color coming up here. See how loose I'm being? Mm -hmm. I'm going to get my darkest, darkest color that I'm seeing along the water. There's this deep, deep value. And it's over here in the lower left quadrant. And I'm looking at my photo and where the photo shows it comes out a little deeper. I'm just trying to paint what I see. I'm trying to look at my reference and paint what I'm seeing. And then I kind of see this value has come out. And I might even add some of this. Some of this sort of loosely. Look how I'm just being sort of loose with the stroke. Again, not trying to paint things as realistically as I can, but just the values of it. So I end up with this gorgeous, relaxed, really lovely, loose painting. All right. Pull the green. Pulling the white into it. And we need even lighter than that, believe it or not. I believe it. Like the sky, this is just this issue because we got to, the photo will fool us. <laughs> so I'm just pulling this in here. You can kind of see that I'm just talking oh. about this water. I'm going to come along here with this lighter color. 
I've been having a really good time reading chat while you What's been happening doing in chat it's while we paint really these values? It's exciting. We've got over 500 people here, and I was just noticing it's Sue Clark's 50th birthday. Hey, so happy birthday, Sue Clark. She's having a fish fry and all sorts of fun stuff, and they're just like talking about that. And I'm like, man, that just sounds like fun. So they're just, there's, you know, lots of cool stuff. So that's kind of why I'm quiet, is that. No, that's totally I'm, okay. I'm switching and reading chat because there's a lot of new people with us from all over the world that are coming and painting with us, and it's just been very exciting to see everybody here saying hello and uh if you guys are wondering what i'm doing i'm, I'm starting the little trail of the boat i actually like the story of the boat off in the distance <laughs> so i'm probably keeping it like you do you can see i'm just talking about this water i get the darker color back going again but this is still right lighter than my dark value and i'll come put a bit of this highlight in here like you do. And I'm just trying to say, this is the color, this is the world. Don't be too tight about it. Don't be too stressed about it. Just know that, you know, this is what you're, you're talking about. And then um, it's sort of fun because I can come in here and get some, like there's some pigment on my brush, but I can get a lot more white on it. And then just start to talk about what could be happening here. We're going to come back with lots of white, but we can just start to put that in and go, okay, we know that's a foot. And there's a little bit right here. There's a little bit of that light right there. Heather Jo was asking, she's like, is this the first time you've painted this? Yeah. So you, yeah, you this was one of those ones where you... I'm using the photo, like you, I would, like, say I went on a trip and I came back and I was going to paint something from my photo. This is how I'd get that sucker done. You are with me as it would be. This is the process. And to be real, like, straight with you guys here, I probably would, if it was a really important piece, I'd probably do one study like this mm -hmm. and then continue yeah. to play with lighting and color and value and, like, how can I make more drama in the piece? Can I make it low-key with a pop of color? You know, what can I do? Yeah. So, but this is just like, I'm just going to put this in. All right, so I've got to put in some of the mountain. Some of the mountain. <laughs> so what are you going to use there for your mountain? I'm trying to decide what I want my lowest value to be, and I'm, I'm feeling like... All right, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to make an executive decision here. And I'm going to use a little of my ultramarine blue and my uh, burnt umber, because that's just totally out there right now. And I'm going to start just putting the dark value of all this in. This is just blocking it in. Right? So, just going to block it in. So I'll come I, back with other colors and, and hues and values. But right now I just want to say, all right, there's this basic shape here. And I don't have to be, I want you to see how loose I'm being about putting it in. It's not that, you don't have to be real particular. You don't have to be Really, really overwhelmed and wrapped up in it. Let's get that picture picture back in there. There it goes. All right, so I'm going to just come along here and back on my brush. I'm just like, all right. Now, this part of the hill I'm going to add a little white to because it comes back here where the buildings are going to be. But it's still quite dark. And I am just getting these values sort of in so that when I come back to tell the story, I know where my objects are. It's going to go in real fast. It's going to go in real loose. Because we're not trying to paint like hyper-realism. Hmm. Not that there's anything wrong with that. No, that's a whole different thing. But say you were just on a cruise, you were on a trip, or you're, this is where you live, and you just wanted to go out for the morning and paint. You know, this day doesn't last very long. <laughs> Right. And, and hyperrealism is really more than, you know, that's, that's a longer live. Um, well, besides it being a longer live, for you as an artist in practicality, right, chances are if you're plein air painting, you're going to go on location, paint for 15 to 30 minutes, you're going to have reference photos, you're going to be doing a lot of tricks and ways of trying to make your piece, mm -hmm. you know, 
be able to be told more than time allows for. So I'm adding purple now to my brown. You can see this is going to give me a different little value through here. But they're almost like the same sort of gray, right? They're almost the same. It's interesting. So even though they're different hues, they're going to also sit there and say there's a little rock here. I'm going to break up this shoreline so I can come back later and uh, tell that story interestingly as well. And just all in purple, our wishes going into the universe. Wishes going in. I like that. That's one of my favorite things is that we put wishes on the canvas. Yeah. And you know, guys, at, if you guys see wishes that are coming in, you can always catch or capture those and put them on your canvas. And we call those, we call you a light keepers when you do that. So we have a lot of, a lot of light keepers in, in, in our community. And we always love and, and appreciate that. We're just... You're just getting all that purple in there. Yeah, I'm just working this purple into the canvas and just making sure the canvas is toned with purple. Now, do you don't you don't sand your canvas before you no. do it? No, these are just inexpensive little gesso boards. I'm going to come up here with just this kind of upward stroke that's this rock. Maybe I'll put some green in this one. That's been one of your favorite things is that I went and... I stocked up on canvas I boards. I loved it, my hoard. I, she's got, a, she's got. I don't know, it was probably a hundred, a couple hundred canvas boards piled up in the corner, and she just loves it. It's like a little dragon horse. She goes over there, and she's like, I want this one, and this one, and this one. <laughs> and comes back and just starts painting with them. So, uh, it's been fun. But we, I went out and uh, I stocked up on like a whole bunch of art supplies for the studio. Because, you know, we... Uh, I just mixed my brown, I like my blues, my brown, and my purple together. Just, you know, I'm going to make this little rock here. And I'm going to come here. This guy's got to be made. He kind of sticks up. And then uh, I'm going to dab this color here and there and, and talk about these little rocky shapes and these little dabs of color in my dark value. Like you do. I'll come back and add some highlights about, I'm going to really darken this here, this lower value here. Maybe darken some of this here and see I'm kind of down through here. Hmm. So I'm starting to just talk about that. Yeah. Just talk about it. I feel like uh, Rhett and Link. I'm going to get into <laughs> my smaller brush. And I'm going to put out some of my other colors. I definitely want to put out a little more thalo green. Got some thalo blue out. And I'm, I have been trying to decide if it's going to be cat or yellow, Indian yellow. And I think I'm going to just put them both out. Again, you guys, don't worry about these things so much. Like, just use what you have. If you don't have Indian yellow, use the yellows that you have. You want a, a deep, rich, warm yellow and a cool, bright yellow. Just use the yellows that you have. And what I'm hoping you're going to take away from this is more than the color, it is value that matters to this type of painting. Trying to see the value. And just don't feel like you're going <laughs> to, just don't feel like you're going to just see it. I print out a black and white photo for a reason because hue can trick the eye now as you're outside and you plan your paint all the time your eye will start to overcome that and make those adjustments for you but while you're figuring it out there's just no harm in just printing out a black and white one and a color one it's just a simple thing that you can do to really improve your experience so I'm going to come here and I'm going to take a little of my thalo blue and my thalo green and my burnt sienna and I'm going to come to this hill, and I'm going to put in some of these dark little values here. 
It's funny. I I'm gonna make some of these lines. I just want to talk about that this is here. That these shapes are irregular and they, they, they come across to about this midpoint, this green. I'm gonna be real loose. I'm gonna be real loose like long neck goose. <laughs> and I'm gonna be looking at where are my deepest values? Where can I really, really push those, right? Get some green out. Let's get some burnt sienna out. You know, we know what we wanna we wanna say. Kind of comes down here with this. Loosely, loose. Where can you loosely, loosely talk about this? Okay. Just coming down here. Between these two mountains, there's quite a bit of green. We're going to be dropping some colorful houses in there. You know, for sure, for sure. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to grab some of my... Oh, yeah, I'm liking that Indian yellow. I'm going to grab some Indian yellow. <laughs> and I'm going to start looking for maybe a smidge of white in this. Oops. I'm going to just start looking for where can I talk about this cliff having lighter color. See, I'm back my brush and I'm just trying to say, hey, let's drag across. There's these sort of sideways striations, aren't there? The better I can do this, the sun is on the forward facing side, isn't it? So even if I'm lighting up little bushes and rock, where am I gonna light up the forward facing side? We're gonna work three values here. I definitely see some light right here and some here, a little bit there, leaving this dark. Because we're not trying to paint every single little thing. We're trying to paint how does it feel? Is it getting darker towards the back? Well, it is. And you can come back even with your, you know, your green and your brown and enforce that and say, yeah, it's definitely darker towards the back here. Now I am going to come in with some homes and some bright little bits of stuff in a second. But I really, really want to capture this crazy hill. So now I've got this this green here, this burnt sienna. But I want to get some yellow on that. See the bright cad? Yeah. This is why I think it's two yellows. Is because there's this crazy light yellow. No. <laughs> I lost my reference, John. <laughs> now I have no idea how to paint the painting. <laughs> Luckily, we have picture in picture. That doesn't help me. Help me get it back. Okay, I'll get it back for you. <laughs> I will have to stunt hands. <laughs> help me. And I think I could even lighten this up a bit. Okay. So you stunt hands me, and I think I'm going to lighten this up even some. I can get down there. I'll get it. No, no, you got to paint. Can you guys let no, me? No, you, you paint. Well, I can't tell you the reference okay. back. Okay, oh, I'll get it. I, you know what? Oh. I did not. I do not have an eidetic memory. If you do, congratulations to you. And... I could use my black and white reference, but I want both. It's like my my whoopee. It's my my security blanket of oh, I need to see the things I'm seeing. It's super super important to me. Let's get some bright yellow there. I just pulled up some bright yellow because I just really want this to to be here. Really, really wanted to. And just loose. Right? We're not. Just trying to understand. Come back into my green. Warm up some green, but. Put it up here at the top. So some of it's cool, some of it's warm. All right, pr 
pretty nice. Pretty nice. Other yeah. places I might enjoy some of this is there's some coming here and like in different places around the front. And I may have to come back and think about it again in a minute, but I do have that. And then I've got, I'm going to think about some of this darker than this, though, I think, with the brown. Look, I just browned it up. You, you did. I'm going to put I some here, it. and I'll come back to think about this a little bit in the future. I just want to remember that it's there. Remember that it's there and that you really like it. You know, what can I see in the hills? i got to make sure that I'm breaking up some tree shapes. Just break up some tree shapes. Break it up. Now, if if you're worried about the paint staying wet in a hot climate, mm. what what do you use? Uh, wet palettes. Um, definitely would use retarder mm -hmm. or glazing medium yeah. and a mister. No. I would have all those tools accessible to me. If I'm outside in a hot, dry climate, so say I'm painting in Sedona, Arizona in the middle of the summer, I'm painting on a wet palette. I have a mister. I have a retarder, <laughs> and I am working fast if I'm painting acrylics. I'm going to be looking at the oil artist standing next to me and giving them the face. Hmm. No, I'm not. I don't <laughs> generally throw shade. <laughs> you know, and a it, little bit. And, and Can I get there, a fresh tub of water, babe? Yeah, and isn't there like open paint that stays open longer and stuff? Um, Golden makes um, a paint that doesn't dry called Golden Open. And then there's another Atelier Interactive, which is another acrylic product that dries slowly. And listen, oil paint is not actually, a lot of people are like, oh, oil paint's so toxic. Some products in oil that our economy can be, but like a good oil paint, you know, as long as you're not eating the lead white <laughs> and you're not using um, turpentines and thinners that have off gassing, if you're using like really beautiful thinners and really beautiful oils, it's pretty, it's just not, you know, it, it, it is the cheap economy and and I think also there was a period of time where stuff was maybe didn't have the oversight that it needed because you talk to the oil companies now, they're really aware of their product and they make beautiful stuff. So I think that's kind of an unfair rap that oil gets like that's super toxic, you know. But I think products that were available to oil artists at one time probably really were. And I'm not an oil expert, but I have friends who are and they are very, very, very enthused about it. So I just like acrylics because I'm an impatient person. I'm going to put out some colorful colors. Color. Colorful colors. Colorful colors. I'm going to put out my cat red. And I'm going to also treat myself to some naphthol red. Hmm. Medium. Which, if you don't have this, you could probably use cat red medium if you need to. But I really like a cooler red. So I didn't. And I'm going to put out some of my... This, is, this actually looks like a landscape palette for me. So right now in colors we have ultramarine blue, thalo blue, thalo green, diox purple, yellow ochre, cad yellow medium, indian yellow, naphthol red medium, cad red light, burnt sienna, and burnt umber. Let's burn all the browns. Yay! Yay! Those are very very naturally like rocky browns. Yes, I just likes them so much. And I haven't put out any black. And I've got some white and some glazing medium. Are, this is what I've got going on. Are you being chromatic today? I'm being chromatic. Automatic chromatic. Oh, that's going to become an episode of Grease. All right. I want to talk a little bit about the buildings. So the temptation is to get in there architecturally and paint buildings. Um, and you can do that. But expressively and impressionistly, you just want to capture the color and the value of the buildings loosely. So I'm going to get another, a small square. Doo, doo, doo. Yep, I'm going to get a number two. <laughs> I'm using this to sort of look at the buildings that I have. And I'm going to gray these out. I'm going to mix up the colors that these come in. So they come in kind of like a peach. Right, and they're in there. Some of them are warm, and some of them are cooler, and you just want to do that. But you also want them to be, these are a little bit further away. So I'm going to get a little bit of my green, and I'm going to knock these bright, bright colors back a titch. Just a titch. Otherwise, they'll look too, too close to us. Right? Mm-hmm. 
And we don't want them to be close. We want them to know their place and stay far away. No. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to start putting in some buildings here. I'm just going to make a little square. I'm just going to pull it down. And then uh, maybe it's got a little friend next to it. It's a little peachier and uh, maybe a little bigger. This one can be down here. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to get a little white. And then say, all right, there's a little low guy here. He's kind of this little color, a little peach. I just added some white to this. See, this is very loose. I'm not trying to, uh, if I've got one that's slightly, I can see some perspective on it, what I can do is grab my ultramarine blue into my color and then just make a little side shadow of this building. Oh, a little dimension. In if I feel like I need it, right? If I feel like it's important, maybe this one is a little more yellow over here. And then we have this really like nice intense big building that comes like up over here. And it was kind of like, let's take the naphthal red and the Indian yellow. We can uh, add a little smidge of ultramarine blue to gray it. Push it back a smidge. And we'll make that nice big building that's right here. Now, see, now that you've shown everybody how to do a couple of these buildings, if they're time travelers watching yeah. this on Rewind, they can just fast forward and see all the little buildings come into play. Yeah. I'm adding a little purple. But for the live people, you're here with us while we do all the buildings. I'm just pushing some of this back. Right? Yep. We're going to get all the little buildings in. All the little buildings together. That's a lot of little buildings. That's a lot of little buildings, and we're not going to be too worried about it. Oh, I think it's pretty cool, actually. I just think just it's... Just little buildings. Just We're just talking about We're saying, hey, there's some buildings. Just in case you guys didn't know. Little building. There's maybe a lot of I'm going to maybe take a little of this yellow ochre and this color here and say there's a little tiny... There's a little guy back here. He's he's back here. He's just... We don't know what's a foot there. Just little squares of color. Now, it is important, right, to put in these little windows. So I'm going to take... My purple and, oh, <laughs> my cad. So it's my cad and my purple. If you need to, you can take your naphthol. You're just making a darker color. Put your ultramarine in there. Make a nice dark color. And I'm going to come just dab some windows. Little buildings. Little buildings. I like the little buildings. Little buildings. If you're green, if you need it, you can come back with your green. And uh, push this back here. Put some, some shrubbery green. back in. You can. It can happen. Right? Mm -hmm. Just loose, happy little painting. Got a little. The top of my building lost its square. Yeah, but I just put it back. Whatever I'm trying to do, I can just come back in and put it back. I just don't need to say every every everything. I just need to say some things about what I'm looking at. Right. If that makes sense. Yeah. Now I'm gonna get a slightly bigger bigger brush, I think a four. And I'm going to start putting in some of these other buildings. Now, these front ones, believe it or not, are kind of in shadow. So even though we have our colors, right, they kind of are grayed out a bit. So that's, you know, something to think about when we're coming over here. There it is. See a little bit of the red to the blue? Yeah. I can work it there. So it's still to the blue. It just... 
So let's say there's a little building right here. And that could be a lighter, lighter building to help it show and a little more blue in it. There we go. Let's get another lighter, lighter but still cooled out building. I'm just going to use my brush to try to square out my space. Just talking about it a little bit. A little bit, a little bit, a little bit. And there's some more of these cooled out ones. They're kind of like, like close to that midpoint. So let's Make sure we put those here. And I'm just brushing, I'm just trying to be square with my brush strokes. I'm in no way trying to be accurate about architecture. It's not something I'm going to do in this piece. It's not going to help me to be it. You're just implying the light and shape and color of the buildings. That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to also come down here. And I'm going to get some of my blue and purple again. I'm going to just make sure that this is pulled down here so I can put in the uh, this little roadway that's down here. Sort of a little square shape. And there can be another little bit of this coming around here. Right? Just along this waterway. If I need flow improver, I'm going to grab my glazing medium just along this little waterway. I'm taking this cool color and it's got a really hot top to it. So I'm going to grab some just white. For later, I'm going to want that same thing here, hot on top. So those are saved and we know where those are. Let's start adding in some peachy buildings. So that's the naphthol and maybe the Indian yellow and some white. Let's get that more to the yellow, uh, yellow and I can see the peach there. Some peach. This is really neat. I know. I know. I've been really quiet because I've been just sort of reading chat and watching and making it's sure things. It's interesting, a, right? Yeah. I'm gonna grab another little. I put some more red on here, and I'm gonna come right here. Maybe tell a little skinny story. Hit a little red there, and then I'm gonna come and get a little yellow, and make a little guy next to this group. There we go. And if I need to, come back here. I'm just trying to tell that story, right? If I need to, I'm going to cool my color, make a little guy right here, and then everything on this side is much warmer. The sun is hitting it, so I can come into this and this. This is the naphthol and the cad red and mix a little white to that and come to this side and just say, all right, this building is right here. Just, there we go. And I'm going to just keep going through these colors and different, you know, runs of things and just be like talking about the little buildings that could be here. Some of them will be more yellow. And up on the hill, up high. Hmm. All right, maybe there's a little yellow one right here. Not everything I see is going to simplify. What colors am I seeing? Why am I seeing them here? I need to get 
some ochre and some naphthol. Maybe I do. This one's got maybe a little interesting roof to it. If I have to offload, I will. Mm -hmm. Get some more yellow, some white. Just trying to talk about the different bright little buildings. That was some purple. Just trying to have a little moment with this. Yeah. Just happily going along. Wiping my brush off because drippies right, are keep, not helpful. You keep psyching me out. I'm like, well, where do you go with that brush? Where am I, I going? I'm going to put a little more cad yellow. Everyone's like, why do you keep twitching? I think I, I need some more yellow yellows. Actually, I think. So I'll put down this like red red and then I, I'm going to, I might add some red red to some of this. Maybe a little bit. Isn't it interesting that these next to each other are pure cooler then, you know, some of these do. And this is just, I'm just painting it out. Hmm. And think how awesome you would look on the beach <laughs> doing this, right? Y yeah, I can. When you look awesome, I'm going to take a little of my ochre and my yellow. Now, listen, if I need to gray my yellow, what am I going to get? I'm going to get a smidge of purple. And I'm going to put some yellow houses. Change my brush stroke. Mm -hmm. Get some orange here. Got some purple and some naphtha. My brush is still dirty. I'm just working it out. Mm -hmm. now you haven't cleaned your brush except for wiping it off there. No, I'm just trying to say, hey, you know, I've got this nice little bunch, this collection of happy buildings. I don't want to paint every building that I have. I'll be overwhelmed if I paint every building that I have. I want to just say, there were some beautiful buildings. We stopped. And you saw all the beautiful buildings. And we saw all these beautiful buildings. Right? Add some purple to some of this. There you go. It framed a little better for you. There. And so see, I'm just like trying to keep them colorful. And then what am I going to do? I'm going to come in. And I want to take... My ultramarine and my docks purple and maybe a little of my red. Let's put in some dark little, little uh, windows. Now, I, it, someone was saying in chat that they, that they thought that uh, these little cities look like uh, little pieces of watermelon stacked on edge. Yes. Because they have little dots and little, little, little. I thought they that was do. really cool. It's just exactly how you want to think of that as an artist, right? You just want to be like... What do I, what am I concerned about here? I can always come and add shadow values and just adding little, little windows, right? Dark right here. Just adding this little dark value. Mm -hmm. And again, if you're going to, you know, want to get tight and regimented about this, this isn't that different of a process that you would use to paint something like this. Right? How are we doing? See our little village? It's going to be a little village. Yeah. Just a little happy village. It really is starting to feel like the little pi the picture. It's got, you know. Not every building is expressed, but enough buildings that it feels like it's the village on the cliff. Right. This is, to me, a painting like this on a trip is more than a photograph will ever be. Because it'll capture how you feel about this. Like, this photographer <laughs> way saturated these buildings. <laughs> so now if you were a time traveler and watching this on, the v on, on, re on replay. I'm going to take some, I'm going to get the purple out of my brush and I'm going to add some bright orange because I feel like I'm missing some bright orange. 
Mix it. So what yeah. are you going to mix them up there? Yeah, I'm going to take my cad yellow and my cad red light and just... Gotcha. I just want to put some... Yay! Like Jolly Rancher stacked up. Yeah. That's another good one I saw out there. And just Cheetos. make sure that there's... Man, this would be some funny colored Cheetos. I've never seen a blue Cheeto. That'd be kind of neat. <laughs> Some people in part of the world's going, what's a Cheeto? What's a Cheeto? <laughs> don't know. Don't find out. It's not your friend. Cheeto's not your friend. <laughs> it's a like a chip we eat here in the States. A I just chip. wanted some more of the color that I was liking in the village in the village. That's some feeling that I was having about that. Now, there's a bunch of fiddly little boats in a bunch of craziness that's not going to go. <laughs> there's all this stuff down here. We're not painting. <laughs> we're not painting it. You're right. We're totally not. <laughs> You've totally nailed it. I'm going to take some of my cad red light into my burnt sienna. And I'm going to come here. We're going to instead replace it with idyllic beach. Totally idyllic. And I'm going to add some of this warm rock. Just some dashes of it where I feel like I'm seeing it. And you're just, you're just loose. There's none of it there, but there's some of it here. Putting some rock shape in there, too. Yep. Just loose little dabs of paint, right? Because I'm not trying to do that. All right. I'm going to take my ultramarine blue and my burnt umber, and I'm going to make a gray. I'd like it to be cooler. More to the blue. Mm. I'm going to come here and I'm going to add some little rocks. Just some loose little rock shapes. Top of this rock could use some of that. And there's a bit of that here. Definitely got some of this. I'll have to talk about what's happening here in a minute. But I just loosely want to grab some paint and think about it some. So I've got my ultramarine blue and my burnt sienna. As I'm talking about that this here is in deeper shadow than this part of the rock. All the way down to here, right? See how that's just loosely starting to take isn't that crazy how that takes shape let's all just take a minute and go <laughs> painting be cool and stuff yep painting be cool we need some bright bright it's kind of like a yellow green it's like crazy so i'm gonna get my indian yellow and a little of my burnt sienna and a little smidge smidge of my green mm -hmm. and add some white to this crazy ah, i nailed it this crazy color that i'm seeing here and add some of these little strange doohickeys. Oh, I see a little, sometimes they seem to have a little orange in it, so I'm going to come in. These back here have got some little orange in. <laughs> a little more Indian yellow. It's so weird. These weird colors are so fun to do. I have to say, what's funny is the international discussion of what a Cheeto is. Oh, again, run from the Cheeto, guys. Cheeto's just, not your friend. It's very funny. I'm going to take some of this color that I made. I'm going to put it on my rocks a couple places. And then uh, definitely think we need to have some coming across here. And pull that down. And then there's some of this really cool, let's, let's, I don't know, let's say it's like maybe a yellow and white. It's just so bright. Now, Add a, a smidge of the green to it, I suppose. Jill was curious here. 
She was like, "When when is when do you hold ba- uh, hold the paintbrush higher on the handle than other times?" When, when do you um, know? if I need to get back from my canvas, I'm going to hold that brush back. If I'm trying to loosen up and not tighten up on my stroke, if I'm trying to have control over the line, I'm going to get closer. So these are all weighted pretty well. So if I'm back here, I'm going to be loosely talking. If I'm up here, I'm going to be very specifically talking, mm-hmm. expressively talking, specifically talking. <laughs> <laughs> so if I'm like, oh, I really, I just want to know that there's some light there and there's some right here, right? And then I'm like, oh, there's a bit there. And right. Expressively talking. Expressive. Expressively. Where is it? It's expressive. And then, um, You know, as I'm going and then, hey, I really feel like there's, I'm going to put out, I think it's drying. I'm going to put out some more ultramarine near my um, burnt umber. The best gray ever. Just saying. Because hmm. you can warm it up. You can cool it down. It's like extraordinary, right? So I take my ultramarine into my burnt umber and get this great gray. And then I can lighten that up, cool it if I need to. But I'm gonna probably have to come with one warm value of it here. So around the edge of that, some of that. Not, you know, we need some of that light, light value out there, don't we? Out there on these rocks that are super, you know, exposed to the sun. This is a very colorful painting. <laughs> it is a very colorful painting. It just is a colorful painting, and it's it's fun to do. This has been you've been you've been you've been painting at this for a while too. Have I? Yeah. I'm sorry. I thought it was gonna no. be short. No, no, it's totally okay. I'm gonna take some of this bright. I have it mixed, and so I'm just gonna take some of it there. And then if I want to come in with the darker color, that's really easy for me to do because I just get back into the brown and the blue, and just. Bring that down here, right? But just so you know, they when 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 you're ready to to to, to know, you've had over 500 likes on this with over 500 wow, people guys, here thank hanging you. out, and they're really loving this. It's just look, this is just fun. This is just super super fun. Guess what we get to do now that we've got some of this in? Though What's I still that? feel like we need a little more of this Indian yellow, green thing happening out here. There it is. <laughs> Just a little bit more out here. All right. So what I want to do is I'm going to take a little of what's happening is I'm getting my brush too deep in the water and I'm pulling up more water than I want. Ah. Uh-huh. If you're wondering why I keep having to wipe on the towel, I'm going to pull some white. So I've toned that with my two blues. Now, after the show here... And I'm going to just add some of this churning water. And even though I haven't finished this little rock out here since I've got it, I'm going to just make sure that I've got some of my churning water talked about here. And it comes back here. Now, will you be doing a traceable on this after the show? Yes, I'll do a traceable on this. Oh, great. But, I mean, like, I highly encourage you, if you're up for it, right... If you're feeling it, if you're feeling it, if you're feeling it, to try to do the quarters. Yeah. I just wanted to talk a little bit more about that, and I can even. I know. Sometimes you get lost in your thoughts. I do. I get get lost. I'm going to come along with this light color along here just a little bit. So I'm just telling that little story. So now we've got a little inlet. It's got a little splashy, splashy. We're actually not that. We don't have that much more to do. Yeah. I kind of want to put out some more Indian yellow. And we really aren't bad. We're just a little over hour in, into this, I think. Okay. So you've yeah. just been painting, painting, painting. We haven't chatted much this time. Ha- we ha- Well, you know what? We can totally like chat and take questions. I'm up for that. Oh, yeah. No, no. I mean, like, there's, we've, been, we've been taking a lot of questions as we've, uh, we've been taking questions as I've been coming up. I want to. 
but lighter than what I've got. So I'm going to wipe off my brush and get back into the white. But I wanted the white to be warmed by the yellow. <laughs> there we go. Yes, yes, yes. There on that rock. A little bit here. And a couple little spots here. Warmed. Just wanted a little warm light. There, see how that just... Whoa! Yep. Just got to do it. Now, I was, I was saying that there's a, we've had such a large community here that we, a lot of the questions that have come up in chat have been answered, like, almost immediately. <laughs> That's always it's good. It's been really good. All right. So we're going to take a little blue and the burnt umber. And weirdly enough, a little of the burnt sienna because it's a little warmer, this gray. Look at that. I'm going to look at that. Yeah, I think that's a good. And a little blue on the side. So let's start kind of talking about what's happening here. So this is a dark value. We're up in this little quadrant. I don't want, the more I say about this, the more I have to say about it. And that can get to be a tricky bit of kit. Yeah. Right? And so I'm going to just say a few things. Like I'm going to say there's kind of this square shape here. This goes into that. I might talk about the square shape. I'm grabbing some just blue, right? I'm going to mm -hmm. talk about the square shape coming back. You can talk about that there's architectural elements in your space loosely, right? But then you also want more docs purple. <laughs> 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 See, and this is how we, we get to wandering Sherpa thoughts. <laughs> wandering Sherpa thoughts? Because you'll, 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 you'll say, What was I saying? I don't know. I'm tracking buttons, and then <laughs> I'm I, like reading conversations, and I know that you were on a thought there. I was. I know there was all a right, thought. So I'm going to get my phthalo blue and my burnt. And all the time they're like, I'm going to cool this side over here a little bit. I need to cool it. <laughs> cool it out, man. I don't want too much of it. You know, again, trying to avoid too much architecture. But I want some because that'll talk about shapes and things that are happening, right? This is a much warmer, greener rock. So I can come back here with, with a sort of warming green, brown. You know, come in here. Just a little of that. It's definitely too not brown enough. Let's get some browner stuff. Because we're going to come with gray right here. Make some highlights. Just trying to talk about. I'm coming down. So I'm finding a plane of like little rocks. I'm going to come expressively. Come talking about that. When I'm expressive, I'm not going to try to draw every little nook and cranny that I see. I'm going to try to draw the basic overall shape that I'm looking at and not past that. Right. So if I'm I'm here, I'm getting some blue, you can kind of see how gray that is. I get some white, I can check my gray. It's pretty gray, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So I can start coming here and say this right here. It's pretty loose. And I can even come a little bit on the outside edge of that, loosely. Maybe talk a little bit on this rock. And I will knock some of this back with my gray, scumbling it, filling in that space. So the purple undervalue is there, but now this forward-facing object is starting to have a thing. So one thing I can do is I can get some white on my brush. And some of this has a nice high value. So I'm going to come here to the end of it where it sort of does. And I'm going to pull just a little bit of that down where I'm seeing that. And then it's a little deeper as it's going up. That's too much blue. Does that ever happen? You go to get a blue and you get too much blue. You're like, that's too much blue. That happens to me all the time. Does it? It's so frustrating, John. When are you painting that I don't see? I don't ever paint. <laughs> Never. <laughs> He's being cheeky. See what you guys don't know. It's still darker. It still needs to be darker, though, the one I have. So I'm going to just, there we go. Come along here under this dark shape that I had originally put in and pull this down. 
And I'm going to say that this is architectural man-made by my brush stroke, by being square, by coming across, across, down, 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 down. I'm still sort of saying, this is a little, this is a little man-made. This isn't just... It has pattern and repetition. Yeah, it has pattern and repetition. I'm going to get a little warmth on my color here in my gray. I'm warming it with the ochre. There we go. Some stuff has happened, and then maybe we'll talk a little bit about that shape there. A little more. There's another. Again, I want to just be like as little as possible, because the more I can talk about the rocks, the happier I'm going to be. But real quick, I'm going to put in my arches. Where's my little brush? My little number two. And we know how we make our deep color, right? Which is the burnt umber, the dark purple, and even a little naphthol. You can get a little blue if you need to. We're just making a deep, dark color, but we're not using black. And I'm going to say there is a little arch that's happening right here. And I might even say that there's a little window. Another little open shape. Coming down this guy, same thing. Just a little bit. Be cautious. We're going to come back with some plant stuff and push that back. Push it back. Push. Push it real good. So I'm going to make another more defined arch right here, pulling it down. I imagine if you lived here, there are certain shapes, shadows, and things that let you know that something is home. Right? Something is home, and you know it's home because you see certain, certain elements in relationship to each other. So if I take... my brush and I add some white to it and I add some blue to it and I come even over that a little bit and pull that down. That feels familiar. Come between these two, make sure these are arched. And I'm still going to get a lot more white on my brush because this part here is much more blown out. Just listening to it. We're just starting to say, hey, there's some architecture here. There is we? some architecture there. There's some architecture. Some people built some stuff. And if we just say it loosely, we can say a lot. But there's a lot of greenery that came up here, wasn't there? Yeah. And so we're going to put out our thalo green again. There you are. I love how the paint creeps closer to uh -huh. me as I'm going. <laughs> it starts out there and it's like, a little of the thalo and the Indian yellow. And I might grab some burnt. So you know, to knock that back and then I'll pull it into warmer and warmer and warmer. So first I'm going to just be like, hey, there's some plant life here. Let's talk about these, these kind of mellow values that are happening, right? Mm -hmm. And then I can be like, but I've got some definitely warm, warm, bright spots that are happening. A little bit there, and I, I'm going to back up my brush and say it's coming down here. And I like that. But you know, maybe maybe I got some gray green happening. So I can take my ultramarine and my yellow ochre. <laughs> Unexpected. <laughs> you know, and make some knocked back values that are happening. Make some knocked back values that are happening. And then pull this in. 
Now we're getting some depth. Something is afoot here. Something's afoot. What's afoot? I don't know. You don't know? I don't know. This we're is, just painting today. I, I'm just watching. I well, hopefully some people are painting along. There's really a lot of people. Everybody's pure. All right, let's add some bright warmth right here. Even brighter. Didn't yeah. get it bright enough. There we go. You're just wipe off my brush. Can we see it now? Oh, yeah. It's happening now, isn't it? It's crazy it how it starts to happen. Because you'll be going along and you think, it's never going to happen. You're I don't know what's going on, but it's never, ever going to happen. You're replacing the boats and people with shrubbery. Well, there's a lot of shrubbery, and I'm choosing to talk about them in rocks. <laughs> I'm going to Bob Ross this sucker. <laughs> Which means, <laughs> if you're not familiar with that basically means is Bob would definitely give you a cabin and a bridge, but ain't nobody living there. No people there. <laughs> <laughs> There's no people there. <laughs> and we're going to do the same thing. Let's finish out these rocks. Right? These joyful, joyful, wonderful rocks. I'm taking my Indian yellow and my burnt umber. I'm creating kind of a nice little warm value that we're going to talk about here. I'm going to just very loosely talk about these little highlights that are afoot. Just a little bit here. You know why no one's at this beach? Uh, I don't know why. They saw Shark Week. <laughs> they seals? Were like, they were like, nope, there's seals up the beach. We're not swimming. Let's uh, definitely highlight the top of this rock. Let's give these rocks some form here. So we've warmed up this space, right? Let's take it back and warm it up. Now I'm going to come into my all, I guess it's my phthalo blue. So I'm going to rinse that out. I thought it was my ultramarine. Where did I put my ultramarine blue? I, I don't know. know. Let's put some more out. It disappeared into the palette. So phthalo blue is going to give me bright greens and ultramarine is going to give me muted greens and grays. And that's just kind of you know what I'm looking for. If I'm looking for something more muted. My paint is drying out on me. If you notice, I haven't been misting or really working my... Uh, it is getting sticky. It's getting sticky, so I'm, I'm working it. So I'm making my gray again. See my nice rock gray, which is just the ultramarine. And nope, that's Thalo. Look what it did. It blued it up. It blued it. It does. It'll blue it up. All those rocks, the, sh the, the, the kind of blue, they have a, a... They have a very distinctive cast to them, but you they're not a hot blue, they're a cool blue. Like catching the reflection from the ocean. So I'm going to just catch some shapage here. And then this, this has a really distinctive shapage coming down <laughs> of just boulder. So I want to make sure I've got my dark values at the back, and I'm just pulling some... So I can dry brush to, as a way to sort of blend that in. All right. Yeah. Now I'm going to get a little more blue and definitely a lot more white. And let's talk some more. Even more white. Too much blue. And you'll find that. You'll have that. You'll be like, it's too blue. It's not a white enough. You just go back in. And that is what the, um, that's why the uh, black and white is such an important part of your process. Because if you're wanting to see how things actually are, you're probably going to need to have that as a way to evaluate. Back up the brush. Coming down here, I might... Now 
And then this here actually had a little blue to it, this forward facing rock that was here. I feel like I've got to drop the depth of my front rocks a little bit. So I'm going to take my phthalo blue and my burnt umber. And just make sure that my low lights are low enough. Glaze a little shadow. Just make sure I have a little shadow. I can always come back and add some light. I just want to make sure I've got shape to what I'm doing mm -hmm. and how I'm doing it. You know, and just take a minute. And the last thing that I personally would do here to really finish my stories, I would want a very warm highlight. I might even take some cad yellow into my white. And e even though I'm, I'm warming my gray, see that? Mm -hmm. Just warming it up a bit. And I might come here and add the warmth to a couple spots because this sun is not a cool sun, it's a warm sun. Right? So I'm way back my brush. I'm just finding my rocks. Okay, I see one thing I still need to mess with. Sometimes you'll one see, thing. you'll be like, I'm going to take my... Just that one thing. Always. I haven't signed it yet, so I'm okay. So I've <laughs> got my cad red light and my burnt umber mixed together. I'm going to add a little cad yellow to it. And just a couple spots. There was some very distinctive warmth here, and it was really bugging me to not see it. Just that it was absolutely part of this story, and I couldn't not have it. All right. So you can keep looking and evaluating. The real trick here is how little <laughs> can you do to tell the whole story, right? That's, it's kind of a really miraculously fun space. How little can I paint? Can I add detail? Can I do stuff? What details do I have to add to tell the story? And what details can I leave out and still have the story speak to me. And those are the little mm -hmm. juggles that you're doing as an artist. Before we go anywhere and as I'm signing, do we have any questions? Oh my gosh. So we've had, so we've had a lot of really, uh, of, of really good questions that came up throughout okay. the thing. Uh, a lot of them were answered by our community, but there was one that came up a couple times that I'll go ahead and ask you about. Oh yeah. Always, and, always, always. And I'm if signing. you could talk about the differences between the yellows that were used here yes. in, in, in the, you know, in, in how they're, uh, I'm going to find a little spot to sign. All right, so when you're painting, um, primary colors come in warms and cools, mm -hmm. right? So I'm going to talk about that a little bit. All right, that is a sad signature, but it's signed. It's good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so somebody's problem sometime later. All right, so we have these yellows. And these reds, Indian yellow, mm -hmm. cad yellow, cad red light, naphthol. And this can be kind of a brown, but it's also kind of a yellow, yellow ochre. This grouping allows me to paint a very warm painting mm -hmm. where the sun kind of hits everything and even our even our blues are kind of warm and so when we're talking about cool and warm I don't know I have a color wheel accessible to me but basically and there's a quest about this we've done a color wheel quest so in your on your warm colors are your reds and yellows and your cool colors are your blues and purples and orange and green kind of are on 
the greens on the cool side and the oranges on the warm side and it's about how those relate. But what they really came to understand is that primary colors red, yellow, and blue have a warm side and a cool side even on primaries. Which is why, have you guys ever noticed that when you mix ultramarine blue and cad yellow you don't get bright green, but if you mix thalo blue green shade in cadmium yellow you get a very bright green. Yeah. And how this matters to us as artists, why do I have two yellows, why do I have two blues? Things that are cool and neutral look further away. Things that are warm and deep look closer. Mm. Playing with those things, playing with cool, far away, muted grayed out colors, warm, intense, close to me colors, allows me to create illusions of depth in my canvas. Cool. And so it's just important to have those choices. But listen, one of the things I get asked a lot is what can I exchange? What can I exchange my yellow for? I've, I don't have Indian yellow. I can't do the painting now. The whole point of the grayscale picture is that you can do the painting in any colors that you want, really. As long as you know the, the, the so, scale. Yeah. yeah, just in your own kit, look for a super saturated bright yellow and this warm redded, this is a very orange yellow, right? There's a lot of red in this yellow. Right, and if you have those, you know, and if you have ochre, some people will just do bright cad yellow and yellow ochre. This is about a preference of how I like to pull colors, right? Everywhere I use the Indian yellow, I was trying to create these very warm, right, orangey spaces, right? But then yeah. when I hit the cad, it was to pull it forward to say hot sunlight was on that rock. That's what all that is about. Well, I don't know if that awesome helps. <laughs> that no, that's great. That's great. Everyone said that was exactly what they needed. So. We'll see how the internet reacts to impressionistic version of this <laughs> <laughs> landscape. Enjoy, internet. Thank you, guys. We had a thank huge you. crowd of people, all these new people from all over the world. Thank you, thank you, thank and, you. It's been wonderful. And I just want to say, I hope that you'll look at your paintings and, and not stop because something looks complicated. Right? Yeah. You right? can do a it. A lot of people wouldn't paint that trip photo, but what I would say to you is simplify, get expressive, get impressionistic. And still tell that story because there's nothing that's going to capture your memory like painting it yourself. Yep. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And we want to see you at the Easy Old tomorrow because it's the beginning of Space Week in yep. the morning. <laughs> <laughs> see you guys. Bye.